Release the hounds! Who? Who let the hounds out? Who? 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 No? Fine. Hey! What's up, my peoples? MGO here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the fans' toys, Willis! So here we are, and there he is, and first and foremost, usually I would take a quick look at the packaging, but since this is a test shot, I did not get any official packaging with this, so here is an empty box of, uh, Ego breakfast sandwiches. These are just good. That's, that's that's really all there is to it. But anyway, moving right along. Here we have uh, Lego my egg. So here we have Fans Toys Willis, who is their take on a masterpiece hound and a very nice figure, in my opinion. Um, so here he is, nice green army jeep, as he's always been. And we'll get in close here so you can see the details. Um, nice silver paint right up front. Lots of molded detail here. You've got the W up front, got nice transclearant headlights right there, you got some little red paint apps right there, you do got the nice yellow star, and you got these lights up top, there's some white and orange silver side view mirrors. Uh, they did use a, a very nice green paint on this toy, it has that nice metal flake finish, so it does have a nice little sparkle to it, and I love it, I love that effect, it Looks it looks beautiful in my opinion. And uh, you do get some molded details. Right around here, you got some nice silver rims. A little paint up right here, which is on the G1 toy as well. Even the uh, the gas cap is molded in and uh, painted silver, which is a nice little touch. And you come to the back here, you got some molded detail there. And the back of the Jeep, so you got the uh, the tail lights picked out in paint. The bottom lights, um, you, know, you can see there, the paint is a little sloppy on these. But again, it's a test shot. And he also has a, a trailer hitch, <laughs> which is just cute. I do a trailer hitch. And you got the seats right here, just on cast in a black plastic. Right there, the steering wheel. And there's even a little bit of paint. I don't know if you can see it, a little bit of paint right there on the console. And you got the transclearant windshield. You've got some windshield wipers up top, which are picked out in paint. And yeah, underneath, you know, you can see the legs, you can see his midsection here, the arms, you can see pretty much how things are going to work out here. But yeah, very nice. Um, he rolls okay. Um, the front wheels roll nice and freely. Um, you can see here. Front wheels roll well. This rear wheel has actually loosened itself up, so it rolls nice and free now. This wheel, though, is still a little snug. Like, when I first got this, these back wheels were, like, super, super tight. Like, you had to apply force to move them, but as you see, like, this one has actually loosened itself up over time. It actually does roll pretty freely, but this one is still, it's still snug. It's still snug. It has, it's loosened itself up, but not as much as this one has. Um, so yeah, it, it, it rolls to a degree, um, but it's just that the wheels just seem to be pinned on a little too tight, um, and hopefully that's something that uh, will be in and should be fixed for the final, hopefully. But um, yeah, so you have that. And uh, just for some comparisons here, uh, we'll bring in Masterpiece Bumblebee. So you can see how many scales there with the Bumblemeister. We have that. Bring this down a little bit. Here he is with Masterpiece Side Swipe. So you can see how they scale with each other. Rides there. Here he is with Iron Hide. Let's go this way. And you can see how those two scale with each other. Right there. Here he is with MP10, Optimus Prime, and you can see how they scale with each other, right there. So there you go, and of course here he is with G1 Hound, because he's precious, big old hound of precious. So. There you go! 
So he does include a, uh, a bunch of accessories here. So you do have some options on uh, how you want to display him in his alt mode. He does have various uh, armaments. He does come with this uh, machine gun right here, which is done in black plastic. Very cool looking. Got some nice detail there. And also has a uh, some hinges here and a piston. So you can actually angle it up and down, which is pretty cool. And you have a port on either side here, so you can plug it on to either side. You can just plug that in there. And there you go, it's got a machine gun. And he also does come with this gun as well, which is more of the, uh, the G1 gun. Right there, it's done in nice silver. And you got a hinge right here, so you can pivot it up and down. And you can plug that into the other side if you want. And there you go, he's got guns. Guns and guns and guns and guns. Or, if you want, he does have his uh, shoulder launcher right here, which is nicely done. Nice big silver missile right there. Got some silver on the back. Right there. And it does come with this uh, adapter right here, which is just cast in black plastic. And you just take this tab, dab it into the slot. And you can plug this onto either side. And that can sit right there as well. And display them like that. If you wish. So you can have that there. And, you know, plug this gun there. There you go. Again, you have some options on how you want to display him. He does also come with the, uh, the spare tire here. Just cast in green, that's some black. Actually, no, it's cast in black and then painted green. My bad, got some silver right there. And it just has a little hook there. You can just take it and hook it onto the back of the Jeep. Right there. And he has a little gas can right there in green. With that hook, you can just hang that off the back on this side. Right there, oops. Make sure everything's not in the way of each other. There you go. You can store all that back there. And there you go. So, you have some options on how you want to display him in his vehicle mode, which is pretty cool. So, he does have some other accessories, but we'll get into those when we get to robot mode. So, let's just get right down to transformation, shall we? Let's, let's just remove that. Put all this off to the side. Remove this, remove this, because we're not going to need that. So let's get down to transformation. Let me raise the camera up a bit here so I have room to operate. So first thing you want to do is you want to come to these side panels here. You want to bring them up like that. Just push those panels up like so. You can split this section down the middle. And now you want to take this whole section here with the seat and everything and pull that up. Right there, you can see the peg that goes into that port right there. So just take that and pull that down like that. Now you want to take the leg and extend it right there. Take this wheel, just untab it, and swing it to the inside of the leg like that. And there you go. You want to take the seat here and just flip it all the way around like that. You want to take this rear part right here and just bring that down. That will make the foot. Take the little trailer hitch here and just fold that up like that. And then you want to take this section right here and swing this around. And you want this to sit flush with this piece right here. Just bring that around and make sure it sits flush like that. And this black piece will come around like that. Bring that up. And there you got a leg. All done. Second verse. Same as the first. Oh, and this already... Came unpegged for me. Thank you, toy. So bring that down. Extend the leg. Swing that wheel in. Swing the seat around. Bring that down. Swing that around. Again, make sure it sits flush with that section right there. Boop. Like that. Bring that around. Bring it back up. And there you got the legs all done. Pretty simple. So now, you want to take this waist section right here. You want to untap it, this thing right here. Just kind of plugs in between these two bits. So you want to take this and you want to extend it on this slider right here. 
like that. And this feels very sturdy. This doesn't feel like it's going to break. I know, uh, one person in the, for in the Forager review was like, oh my god, that looks like it's going to break. This, it's not going to break on Forager and on this, which has, you know, works the same way. This doesn't look like it's going to break. It feels very sturdy. And I've been messing with this thing for a good couple of days, so it doesn't look like it's stressed or anything. It looks like it's going to hold up just fine. But anyway, you want to extend that like that. Now, this is the section where a lot of people are complaining, and this is the section that is... It's not hard. It's not a difficult transformation. There's a specific order, and nobody really knows what that order is. <laughs> and that's the problem, because we didn't get instructions with this test shot. So, I think people are just crying over-engineered because they don't know what they're doing. And granted, I'm not 100% sure that I know what I'm doing either, but this is the best way that I figured out how to transform all this. The easiest way. Um, so, we'll, we'll give this a shot here. So, first thing you want to do is you want to take these little panels here from the wheel cover. Just swing those back. Untap that. Swing that back. And now, you're going to just angle that back because you do need clearance here. You want to take this front bumper section. You want to kind of push it in and then push this section. That will unclip that and will allow you to take this front bumper section here, this whole front grill section, and swing it up like that. And you can see these two tabs pegged into the forearms right there. So all that's freed up now. So now you can take the arms and swing them out. Swing them out. Like that. <clears throat> and now you want to take the head. It only swings one way, so you have to kind of bring this down and swing this back around. Oops. And you have to make sure this bit, this bit too, this bit you have to make sure is always facing straight down which can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, because it does like to move. But this piece right here always needs to be straight down, because if it's angled in any way, it's going to get in the way of stuff. So you want to swing that around and bring his head up. You want to bring that back up, because you will need this up for clearance. So now, at this point in the transformation, again, you just want to make sure that's straight. You want to take the arm and you want to swing it forward on this panel right here. You can see that swings in like that. And now you just want to take the wheel. You want to bring it in halfway. It actually does kind of, it is kind of on a ratchet. So you hear it kind of click. I mean, it's not a ratchet. It's just the, the, the way it's molded. It, it has like natural stopping points. You can kind of hear it click. So you want to bring it in just halfway. You don't want to fold it up all the way yet. And that pretty much gives you just enough clearance here to take this entire panel right here and swing it around like that. Swing it around, swing it around. And, you know, it is going to hit the wheel, but the wheel will just kind of roll with it. And again, see, I had this facing up, so that's why now it's getting stuck on me because I have to leave this up. This is hard to do. You're doing this with a camera under your chin. You get this up so that way I have the room to operate. There we go. That's better. So take this and just swing it around, swing it around. Boom. There you go. So just make sure it goes all the way up in there. Like that. And at that point, now you can take this wheel and bring it the rest of the way in. So second verse, same as the first. You just want to take the shoulder here. You want to bring that panel in like that. Bring that wheel in halfway, and you can see, like, it kind of, uh, when you bring it in, it kind of angles itself in. So it gives you just that little bit of clearance. It gives you just enough clearance. And again, make sure that this piece is straight. It helps if you straighten out the arm, too. Make sure that this piece is straight. And then just take the, take the arm here, take the sole shoulder assembly, and swing it up. Like that. And on this side, this hinge is really tight. So this, yeah, it's a little stiffer. There you go. Bring it up. Like that. And then you can take the wheel and push it up into the chest. Right there. There you go. Hard part's over. So at this point now, you can just collapse this in like that. And this little, this little bit right here did come separate in the baggie. It's just basically a screw hole cover. Uh, it's like a little gear shift molded in and whatnot. And it's basically just a screw hole cover. It just plugs in right there. So 
just so you know, if that does come separately in the box if you buy this toy. But then you just take this, collapse it in like that, and you can bring this grill section down, and this will tab in right there, those two tabs, lock all that in place, bring the head down, lock that into place, take the steering wheel, bring that down, bring this down, take these little wheel cover bits, let's bring those up against the shoulders, like that. Bring his arms down, just rotate them so the elbows are oriented properly. And then you take the hands here, and you pull them out, like that. And they do have a locking mechanism. You have to slide them inward, and you'll hear them snap right there. They'll click into place, and that makes it so you can't accidentally bump them back up into the forearm. That locks them in place right there, which I think is quite clever. So you just take the hand, pull it out, and then just push it in. Right there, you hear it snap into place. And there you go. And then the last thing you want to do, this came down on their own, but the last thing you want to do is you want to take these uh, wheel covers right here, push that up, push it up, take these side view mirrors, push them down, and there you go. There you have Willis in his robot mode. And all I gotta say is, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> 80s sitcom references. I had to make them. I had to make them. I would lose respect for myself if I didn't, okay? Give me a break. Okay, I had to do it. I, that's her. <laughs> I wouldn't forgive myself if I didn't. But anyway, here we have Willis in his robot mode. And uh, very cool, very nicely done, in my opinion. And definitely looks like his, uh, like his animation model from the cartoon. And I really, really do like him. So we'll get in close here on the head sculpt. You can see very nice head sculpt. Nice silver paint, nice blue eyes. Very cool. And yeah, all around, you know, very well done. You got the yellow stripes here on the forearms. Got some silver right there on the waist. Got some green, yellow stripes there. Nice silver thighs. Got some red paint ash right there on the knees. Got the feet here with some paint apps as well. And backpack, he really doesn't have a backpack. I mean, everything pretty much comes together nice and clean. Right there. You know, his feet are a little on the chunky side, but, you know, it's it's hound. His feet are always going to be a little on the chunky side. But I like how they work the transformation so he does actually have, you know, a little, you know, slope to his feet. It's not just the, you know, he, he doesn't just have a big solid block as a foot. So I like that his foot actually has a shape to it. I do like that. But, yeah, very, very cool. Um, Articulation-wise... Pick the camera up a little bit, yeah. Articulation wise, the head can rotate. Uh, it can move up and down, although the hinge is pretty tight, but he can move his head up and down. See, sometimes if I'm moving it, I have to hold this down. Because, <laughs> like I said, that hinge is tight. But he can look up, he can look, he can look down a little bit. Right there. Arms can do a 360. Now, this stuff can kind of get in the way, so you kind of have to move his arm outward a little bit to get his arm to rotate. But you do have full rotation there. Full outward movement, you have a bicep swivel, 90 degrees of elbow bend, wrist swivel, hands open and close. He does have a waist swivel. Legs can go forward that much, can go back that much, can go outward pretty much far. You can, you know, you can do the full splits there. He does have a swivel at the hip. He does have a double jointed knee, so you get a pretty... Pretty decent knee bend right there. And the feet can, you know, they can pivot up and down. You can pivot up at this point. It can pivot down a little bit. And you do get some nice ankle tilt. Pretty much full tiltage right there. So there you go. And of course, you can give him his uh, shoulder launcher right here. And there's just a little tab right there. And it just tabs into either side. It just tabs into this little notch right here that the you know the window the windshield kind of leaves behind there and um you know it it 
Tabs in securely enough, but on my copy of the test shot anyway, it's a little loose. Like if you know, if I wobble him around, his that that's the first time that's happened. <laughs> the mirror came off. Who the heck? Who the heck, man? <laughs> that's not what I was trying to demonstrate, but okay. Again, it's a test shot. But yeah, like it, that that it doesn't hold like dead solid. You can see if you give it a little wiggle, it'll just fall right out. So, hopefully that'll be tweaked for the final. You can give him a shoulder launcher right there. And if you want to, you can take the spare tire. I mean, you can hang it, you know, hang off the, off the windshield there if you want. It's totally up to you. You can hang the gas can there, too, if you just kind of position things the right way. Let's move this on this side, I think. I'll give you some more space. I don't know. Nope. I guess on this side. I did have them both on here before. I forget how I did it. I think it was like that or something. I don't know. <laughs> but you can figure it out. So there you have that. And he does include his gun right here, which is done in silver. Very nice. It's very cool. Some nice details. Right there. And it has the typical, you know, masterpiece thing with the tab. On either side, so you can put it in his left or his right hand, and he does have the slot right there in the palm. Now, it doesn't tab in securely, like there's no real friction going on here. As you can see, it just kind of wobbles around, but if you close his hand around it, he does hold it very solidly. Let me take this out because he's going to drop it anyway. Um, but you can see, like, once you, once you wrap his fingers around it, I mean, you know, I can give him a good... Vigorous shaking and you know, he he doesn't lose his grip on it. He does hold it very securely But I would still like to be able to feel that friction when I tab that in and it's just not there at all So hopefully that is something that uh, will be and definitely should be tweaked for the uh, for the final So I'll just plug that back in And he can also hold uh, this gun as well As a handheld weapon it does have the tabs on either side so you can take that and plug that into his hand right there. Wrap his fingers around it. This one, again, you know, it doesn't really tab in securely, but once you wrap his fingers around it, he does hold it dead solid. You can just take this and fold this up like that. And there he has his other gun. If you want that kind of action going on there. So you have that. Now he does come with an alternate head as well, with a, uh, with a white face right there. So if you don't like the silver face, you can give him a white face. This is, I believe, the original head sculpt that they were going to use on this toy, because if you hold them side by side, get the camera up a little bit here so you can see better. You can see they, they actually are two different face sculpts there. And I believe this was the original head sculpt they were going to use, and people were complaining about it, and they ended up changing it to that. But I guess they figured, well, we already made this head, so we're going to use it. <laughs> so they're using this as the alternate head and uh, painted it white. But, um, I don't have a problem with this. I, I like the head sculpt. I don't think it's bad, but anyway. Yeah, I got the white face. I saw the, uh, the silver neck there. And, uh, to swap out the head, it's, it's very simple. Just remove this. It's just, uh, the head's just on a, uh, on a mushroom peg here. So you just kind of take it and just slide it out. Take the new head and just push that back in. Wait. Get that. Here we go. Yeah. Slide that in. And there he goes. Now he has a white face. If that is what tickles your fancy. So there you go. But I personally prefer the silver face. So he's going to stay with the silver face. As far as I'm concerned. Now the last accessory that he comes with is uh, this little transclearant piece of plastic right here. And uh, this is basically his little underwater like scuba mask. And... It basically just fits like right in there, right to that notch. And it just holds in with friction. And on this face, it doesn't really hold on too well. You can see how that works there. So it has a little underwater scuba mask. Are you for scuba? And it fits on this head too. You can use it for either head. And both of them, they want to kind of push themselves out a little bit there. It doesn't, at least on my copy of the test shot, it doesn't hold on too well. Hopefully, again, they'll, they'll fix that for the final. But there you go. Yeah. As usual, it's, uh, it's, 
it's the very masterpiece thing to do to do that little nudge nudge wink wink to that one thing that happened in that one episode on the show for one second you know so <laughs> there you go so there you have that now for comparison here he is with masterpiece bumblebee and we'll bring in sideswipe too so you can see how he looks with those guys right there uh, what else have we got? Here he is with Masterpiece Ironhide and Prime. So you can see how he scales there. And somebody posted, I, I think it was Fans Toys that posted this picture. They actually posted a, um, uh, uh, a screenshot from the G1 cartoon where Hound was standing like right in front of Prime. And that pretty much was the scale right there. So if that's what they're going by, then that, that is accurate. So I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know, but you know, then again, not much about the G1 cartoon was consistent, you know, consistent. So <laughs> things change from like frame to frame in that cartoon. So yeah, no, you can't, you can't quote it as gospel, but anyway, uh, what else have we got? Uh, here he is with, uh, Fans Toys Tesla. There, not Perceptor. You can see how he scales there. Uh, here he is with Forager, since they came together. See how he scales there with the Insecticon. Right there. Uh, here he is with the Ocular Max Jaguar. They're not Ravage, just because. See how they scale, and that actually, that, that looks good together right there. That works for me. I think that looks good. So, there you have that. And here he is with the G1 Hound Cottage Pressure. Social Pressure. There you have that. Yeah, I think we got everything. So yeah, um, as far as uh, Willis here goes, um, very nice figure. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I, I really like this guy. Um, I know um, Make Toys has a uh, what's theirs called? Uh, Gun Dog, I believe it's called. Um, Gun Dog. You know, th I'm pretty much gonna say the same thing that I said with um. With uh, the Insecticons, I mean, you know, I, I think no matter which way you go, if you go with Fans Toys or if you go with Make Toys, I think either way you're going to end up with a really good hound on your shelf. Um, me personally, I I like Willis better better because, you know, I, I've said this time and time again, I feel like Fans Toys have just, like, they've nailed the Masterpiece aesthetic. Like, they got it down packed. And, um, you know, this guy really looks like his animation model. And the Make Toys version, while it looks good, it looks great, honestly. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. I got all kinds of stuff in my throat. I do apologize. But, um, uh, Make Toys version looks great. Like, not taking anything away from it, but it does look more like Hound if he had a couple extra late night Energon goodies. <laughs> like he's a little bulkier, a little chunkier, and that doesn't really match up too well with uh, with the animation model. And this looks more, you know, it looks more on par with the animation model. So I do like him better because I feel like he he fits a lot better on the masterpiece shelf. Um, as far as the transformation goes. Um, it's not a hard transformation. It's not. It's not a difficult transformation. You know, the, the legs are very straightforward. The legs are very simple. The legs are very easy to figure out, you know, even without instructions. The upper body, it's not that it's difficult. It's not that it's over-engineered. It's not. The fact is, is that you're working within really close quarters. You know, the, the tolerances and the clearances are very tight. And, um, like I said, they're... There is a specific order to transforming the upper body, and I don't think anybody's been able to figure out what that is exactly. I mean, the, the way I showed you is the best way that I have figured out after messing with him for a couple of days. Um, it was the smoothest way that I could figure out to, to transform this guy, to transform the upper body anyway. Um, but keep in mind, if you buy this toy, it will come with an instruction booklet that will say, step one, do this, step two, do this, step three, do this. You'll know what that specific order is. We don't because we didn't get instructions with this thing. So 
you know, like I said, the transformation for the upper body is not difficult. It's just that you're working within close quarters and there is a specific order to things. And that's what you need to know <laughs> in order to transform this successfully. But, uh, you know, I mean, granted, it, you know, it's, it's still not as smooth. I mean, you know, there are still instances where you are kind of pushing things past things. Cause like I said, you're working within very close quarters and you know, you have to make sure things are just out of the way to get things past other things. But, um, again, you know, it's just a point of figuring out what that specific order is, but it's, it's, it's not a hard transformation. It's not over-engineered. I know some people are going to cry over-engineered about this. It's not, it's actually a pretty straightforward transformation. It's just that's, Everything's pretty tight in there, you know, clearance-wise. That's the only issue with it, really. So, there you go. I, uh, all in all, though, I, I do really like this guy. Like I said, I think he, I, I think he works a lot better for uh, the Masterpiece aesthetic than Gundog. But again, taking nothing away from Gundog because he looks like an amazing figure as well. So, definitely, like I said, no matter which way you go, you're going to end up with a really, really good hound on your shelf. So... There you have it. But, of course, that is just my humble opinion. Of course, my opinion doesn't really mean anything, because the only thing that matters is, what do you think of this figure? Do you think this is a good figure? Do you think this is worth your money? Because the final judgment and the only opinion that matters is yours, because it is your money. So, there you go. So, if you would like a Willis or any of Fans Toys other offerings, you can always check out BigBadToyStore.com for availability. There will be a link in the description down below, so check that out. You can also check out my third-party Transformers playlist for any reviews you may have missed, also linked in the description down below, so check that out as well. And I think that's it, so don't forget to check out Endgames, check out Lori Plan, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below, and I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So, there is the Fans Toys of Willis and this is MGO saying remember you don't stop playing because you grow old you grow old because you stop playing be a geek be proud boom in your face Hound have you seen Inferno he's late for the meeting bald I haven't seen him Prime sorry guys here I come I'm here hold down hold down Sorry I'm late for the meeting. Oh, are you guys all right? Great. If you don't mind two tons of Inferno sitting on your head plate. Look, you get ten tons of Prime off my shoulder struts, and I'll get off your noggin. That's it. I hate you all. We're all fired. I'm working solo.